Hello, Vijitra. So what do you have for us? I mean, uh, you have uh, 31 candidates for the governor of Bangkok. It's quite a lot. Yes, uh, as you mentioned, is is the highest number that we've ever had. Uh, it goes to show also that, you know, the, how the sentiment of the country is effectively right now towards the current government of Ryu Chan Osha. Um, and today, despite the rain, um, it's been raining on and off all day. Uh, you're still seeing people turn up at polling stations across 50 districts of Bangkok, young and old. I've seen uh, people, the elderly, being cared by their grandchildren to, to come vote, as well as first-time voters, too. And this is a uh, this year, 16% of the... 4.4 million eligible voters um, are first-time voters, um, although it doesn't account that much because the majority still make up of the uh, Gen X, Y, and uh, the baby boomers. But it also really, um, it, it also really matters how it's going to turn out. And experts say this election is so important because it's the first one. Um, in nine years, as you mentioned earlier, but it's also a barometer um, gauging as to how popular the national government is, who eight years ago, exactly today, staged the coup and then seized power and they, they became an elected government in 2019. Right, Fijitra, so we would like to know who is the strongest candidate between the 31 a candidate. Do you have any information about that? Yes. Yeah, so, um, although opinion polls, um, they're they're not they're not allowed out since last week, but the latest results still show the front runner. Um, his name is Chat Chat Sitipan. He's an independent candidate. However, he was a former transport minister to Ying Lak Shinawat, who is currently living in exile. Um, and uh, he's been studying, he's been going on the ground, on a field meeting, communities across Bang Bangkok for the past two years. So um, he's poised to win this time, but um, opinion polls in Thailand are notoriously unreliable. So we're going to have to wait and see. In just a few hours, um, polling stations across uh, Bangkok will be closed at 5 p.m. and preliminary results would come in um, probably in the early evening. We should know um, who's going to be the next governor of Bangkok as well as the metropolitan councils. All right. So, Fijitra, one last question for me. So, have you have you given your vote? And how is your feeling as Bangkok's resident? Giving your vote after um, nine years. Um, I didn't get to vote because I'm I'm actually not from Bangkok originally. Oh, right. But um, I, you know, I I live and work here, so you know, I do have that bond with Bangkok and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's very exciting to see how excited people are, to, especially the first-time voters, but also the, the older generation, too, because they haven't exercised their democratic rights for, like, so many years, almost a decade, right? So right. for me to see that, it's, it's incredible. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, you know, whether this vote turnout would be as expected as the um, election commission uh, of 70 percent or not. Now, I'm in a small slum community. Um, you know, people might want to, a new candidate who has nothing to do with the government. Mm -hmm. But in a small communities like this, they just want their basics fixed, the yeah. c uh, congestion, traffic, mm -hmm. and uh, the roads, and, and flood, persistent flooding, as you mentioned earlier. So mm -hmm. um, it's going to be very interesting to see uh, the turnout. Yes, it's very interesting. So, Fijitra uh, Duangde, thank you very much for your report. Please stay safe, and uh, yes, thank you very much. So that was <laughs> Fijitra Duangde reporting from Bangkok, Thailand. Thank you both. Yeah.